for refuge and to enlighten and to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, by the accumulations of the practice of giving and so forth, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for a few gentlemen enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. By my accumulations of the practice of giving and so forth, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for a few gentlemen enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. By my accumulations of the practice of giving and so forth, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. Sanye Juda Zogi Chonam Da Chanju Pardo Dane Gyasu Che Tage Jin Sake Be Sonam Gyo Tola Fenjre Sanye Duvarai Shio Sanye Chodan Zogi Chonam Chanju Pardo Dane Gyasu Che Tage Jin Sake Be Sonam Gyo Tola Penjir Sangye Dru Barai Shio Sangye Chota Soge Chonam Chanju Vardu Dane Gyasu Che Tola Penjir Sangye Dru Barai Shio All phenomena arise from causes. The causes are taught by the Tathagata, the cessation of causes as well as taught by the Great Seer. Om Yetarama Hetu Prabhava Hetu Deshan Tathagato Yavatat Desham Chayo Niroda Evam Vati Mahashramana Yeswaha Yavatat Desham Chayo Niroda Eva Madi Swaha Om Yetarama Hetu Prabhava Hetu Desham Dathagato Yavatat Desham Chayo Niroda Evam Bhati Mahashramana Yeswaha Tiyatha Om Gati Gati Paragati Parasam Gati Bodhi Swaha Tiyata Om Gati Gati Paragati Parasam Gati Bodhi Swaha Tiyata Om Gati Gati Paragati Parasam Gati Bodhi Swaha Tiyata Om Gati Gati Paragati Parasam Gati Bodhi Swaha Tiyata Om Gati Gati Paragati Parasam Gati Bodhi Swaha Okay, the, when anyone achieves enlightenment, when anybody, anyone achieves enlightenment, then the ones, say, according to the Tantra, say the various five aggregates, all these five aggregates, the aggregates that we have, they turn into the five Dhyani Buddhas, five Buddha families, they turn into Dhyani Buddhas. Likewise, your wisdom turns into Arab Manjushri. 
then your compassion turns into Aravalukteshvara. So this is how it happens. Oftentimes we are feeling that <coughs> Aramanjushri is just only one deity. Aravalukteshvara is only one deity. This is not true. See, when each one of us become enlightened, when each one of you become enlightened, then your compassion manifests in the form of Aravalukteshvara. Then your wisdom manifests in the form of Aramanjushri. Then your, say, the loving kindness um, manifest in the form of Aramatriya and then you are say the, the power ability to ability to benefit beings so that power that turns into the effective power turns into um, Arya Vajrapani Arya Vajrapani so at one point the, the Buddha Shakyamuni was presiding over a small gathering small gathering then the Uh, Indra was there, Indra who was the, the king of the celestial beings. He was there with the divine appearance, the radiance and so forth. And then, and of course, first the, the Arya Vajrapani was there, Arya Vajrapani, the, the manifestation of the power. So we often speak about the, the three qualities of the Buddha, perfect, the perfect love, perfect knowledge and perfect power. So the perfect love or the compassion manifests in the form of Adam Are Avalukiteshvara. Perfect knowledge is manifested in the form of Arya Manjushri and the perfect power is manifested in the form of Arya Vajrapani. So anyone who becomes Buddha should necessarily be perfected in these three, three qualities. So when Buddha Shaikh was presiding over there, Arya Vajrapani, the perfection of the power and he was also on the side. And then Indra was over there. And the, 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 the then king, king of that uh, empire, uh, Ajashatru. Ajashatru, the son of Bimbisara, King Bimbisara, he was also there. And then Mughaliana was there, Mughaliana. Okay. No. So oftentimes, the Bodhisattva was depicted with two monks on the two sides. So the one on the right side is Shariputra, left is uh, Mughaliyana, Arad Mughaliyana. So Mughaliyana was also present there. Then, um, Arad Vajrapani, Arad Vajrapani um, uh, his unique the hand implement or the implement is a Vajra. It's for this reason that he's known as Vajrapani. Pani means holding, holding the Vajra in his hand all the time. Then the King Ajishadru, King Ajishadru, he was actually so proud of his physical might, physical might. And physically, he was very strong, very proud of his physical might. Then, um, because that Arya Vajrapani is so special, and next to the Buddha, King Ajashatru was just wondering what could that Vajra be? He was holding this Vajra all the time. So King Ajashatru was wondering as to what this Vajra be. And he was so curious. And but he dare not ask Vajrapani as to please show me a Vajra. So then the, the Buddha Buddha asked Ada Vajrapani, Vajrapani, you put your Vajra here. Then Aravajpani put the Vajra there in front of the Buddha. Then Buddha invited King Ajashatru. King Ajashatru, you come, you can and take this Vajra. So he was so happy. The Buddha read his mind. And then he stood up and said, this is the, the Vajra there. Then he just hold it as well like he's going to play like this. He hold it and he was trying to move it. He could not even move it. He could not even move it. Then he was trying to put, put all his strength to move it. He could not. Finally, he gave up. And he had this air. On, the, on this earth, physically, I'm the mightiest. This amount of air he, he had, but he could not even move it. He tried, 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 and finally he gave up. Then he passed it to Indra. Who is Indra? The king of the celestial beings. So Indra, um, Indra tried that is easy for him. 
he did it again he could not move he could not move and he tried to do it because uh, Indra is particularly known for throwing his his own Vajra Indra also has his own Vajra throw his Vajra to demolish his enemies this is what he's known for so this time he couldn't move, move this Vajra Vajra of the Vajra Pani then he he gave up and then he passed it down to Arya Mughaliana and Arya Mughaliana is known for miracle power because it is said that of all the Buddhas, the, the followers or the, the monks around the Buddha, uh, the, the Mughriya is the one with the greatest medical power. So Indra finally gave up and gave, passed it down to uh, the Arhat Mughriyana. And the Mughriyana tried to pick it up, he could not move it. And then again he was sitting in the Samadhi, again he was going to pick it up, he could not. Again he was in the Samadhi, he could not. So finally then he started to cry, Mughriyana cried. And then back the Buddha, Venerable Sir, what happened to me? Now my miracle power is gone. It's already disappeared. And the Buddha said, your miracle power has not disappeared. This Vajra, this Vajra, for this, for somebody to pick this up, the power that one requires is much, much, much more than the miracle power that you have. Then the Buddha invited Aravajrapani to pick it up. Then I should up just with these two fingers, the thumb and the forefinger, picked it up and threw it in the sky and just played it with it. And then Ajay Shatru was so fascinated because he had this air of the physical might. On this earth, I'm the mightiest, I'm the physically the strongest. And then today he could not even move it and Ajay Vajrapani just with two fingers, he just threw it up and then played it with like a small child, like, like a toy. He was so fascinated, he did not even look at the Aravajrapani. <laughs> and then he, uh, he turned towards the Buddha. The Buddha, known for his compassion, affection, forgiveness, all these things, he turned towards the Buddha. How come that Aravajrapani is able to do like this? So he did not look at Aravajrapani's face. So then the Buddha said that Aravajrapani, that the fact that he is able to do this is because of the power of his bodhicitta. Because of the power of the Bodhicitta, that he gained such a power, he gained such a power. And then uh, Aravajapani said, asked the Buddha, what kind, of, what kind of causes should I accumulate in order to gain such power? So the Buddha then enumerated a list of ten causes. Most of them helping, serving the weaker people, and then helping your parents, and then say, the, say where, where you are able to support others, you support others, to be humble, to assume humility. All these qualities of compassion, they were being enumerated, a list of ten were enumerated. So this is a power of compassion. And oftentimes we think that we, when we practice compassion, then we always take the, 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 the laws, we suffer. This is not true. If one, is, if one really gains conviction that it is compassion, compassion, the practice of love and affection towards others. And it's very strange. The more we practice, um, the deeper we go. And compassion has so many levels. It's not just compassion, not just what we call as compassion. It has so many levels. Sophistications are there. Sophistication. As we go to this practice more and more yourself, then we see that there are so many layers of sophistication. And then, for example, in my life, in my life, say, I was so fascinated by, say, some qualities of compassion, humility, very profound, very profound, uh, by only few people in my life. So rare. And it is not non-existent. It is not non-existent. It does exist, but rare. Rare, and I saw them in say, some three or four monks, and they all happened to be monks. They, this call it very profound compassion. I saw them in the ordinary monks, and by no means they are ordinary. By no means, and this I could not imagine that I was because of from my thinking, or oh, this should be like this, and then when I actually meet the person, it's like. 
what do you call it? Once in a blue moon. So rare. And yet, when you see this, it's mind-blowing. It's amazing. We just lost in admiration. Wow, it's amazing. Right? Okay. So, um, this, is, this will come to us only through cultivation. Generally speaking, we do see that, oh, some people are more compassionate, some people are less compassionate, right? Say, even amongst the, the ordinary people, the display of enormous compassion. Um, so, enormous compassion and profound compassion, these two are different. Enormous compassion and profound compassion is different. For example, enormous compassion, like, for example, say, if there's a sudden need of a thing, you jump there to help, okay? Profound compassion is, no matter what consequences, you could see the consequences already. If I do like this, I will suffer like this. If I do like this, I will suffer like this. So that person is going to suffer like this. Also, I'll help him or her like this. Then this thing will happen, and then I will do like this. All these calculations are there. And then when you actually delve, delve into the act of compassion, you will never pull back. You will never pull back. Oftentimes, what we do is that we jump to help, and when they see this, the other person a little nasty, then you easily pull back. Right? Pull back. Whereas the profound compassion will never retreat. It will keep going, keep going. It will never give up. It's amazing. So these things will uh, come to us only through cultivation. Only through cultivation. A natural gift of compassion would be like the seed. And then we will have to cultivate to germinate this seed further through intellectual inquiry. We have to we have to build on it through analytical through analysis through analysis, read more texts and how the bodhisattvas have been behaving, or say engaging in the bodhisattva paths, and then say what are the qualities displayed by the bodhisattvas, and the mention, for example say the bodhicitta in Abhisamankara, <coughs> there's a mention of 22 bodhicittas, 22 bodhicittas, and. Um, uh, at one point, I was in America, um, editing one book, editing one book, and don't ask me what that book is. <laughs> okay, I was deliberately sent there to edit the book, and um, for the book, we need a clear exposition of the Bodhicitta divisions, the 22 Bodhicitta divisions. And I had to refer to sources. So I was going through the Lama Tsongkhapa's commentary, commentary, the Golden Rosary. There's a big commentary, Golden Rosary. I was going through this. And then the, all the 22 bodhicittas, 22 bodhicittas, they were explained. And explained and then reading. All this, I don't know. I already read this so many times in the past. So that time, maybe the blessings of the Guru, or so whatever, for whatever reason. I was reading through this, and at one point, somewhere, I think the, the Bumi number 10, Bodhisattva Bumi, no, Bumi number 9, I think, 8 or 9. So there, the Bodhisattvas, how they think about with the future. So if I help like this, then this is going to be the consequence with this, then the next step is like this. They think about the whole community. They think about the whole community, then they could plan like this, like this, and then, so the step one, then this will happen, then I have to move it like this, then step two, then I will be amazed. Just read this and I was so fascinated. I was so I personally I met it. I was very I was so fortunate that time. I don't know what happened. So I couldn't control my tears. It's amazing, so profound. But not like the ordinary people who jump there and then one and finish, one time and finish. No, make sure that the beings are continuously benefited till the end. Amazing. So this all happened only through cultivation. Okay, so with this in mind, um, and if we do cultivate, if we do cultivate, it is like, say, for the computer, the hardware and the software. So same, the, we read, and then we instantly feel a little bit of change in our mind. This is like the software. Software, you can de delete the software. Whereas, say if you practice it, if you practice it, practice, there's a slow change happening from, from within. From deep within, there's a change happening. 
from deep within. It is only through analytical meditation, simply through meditation emptiness, that compassion that I'm talking about will not naturally arise. Simply through breathing meditation, simply through, uh, I would say, I may go to the extent of saying awareness, awareness meditation, the nature of the mind meditation will not naturally give rise to this compassion. No. Then later on, as you reach to some level, some level, then just meditate on the, the, the wisdom and emptiness, and this will enhance your compassion. You practice compassion, wisdom and emptiness can be enhanced. So mutually enhancing each other will happen at a very certain, the, a certain level of the, the advancement. Or So otherwise, before that, we have to cultivate them separately. This is, without cultivation, it will never happen. It will never happen. Okay, so why I'm saying this very strongly is because oftentimes uh, people don't emphasize so much on the practice of God. The practice, practice of bodhicitta. Say, oh, just directly into emptiness, directly into the awareness, awareness meditation. Then they say, Mahamudra meditation, directly there. And then a little bit of the introduction, uh, say, uh, I go for efficient and enlightened to the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. By making reason that, that these things are there as a part of ritual. And then, actually, what they do is directly go into some of the practice. There's nothing wrong in it, as I said earlier. There's nothing wrong in it. But what's the problem is that without bodhicitta, all other practices by no means will take us to gade gade. For the gade, the driving force is bodhicitta. So, the, and that, we cannot have it unless until we deliberately cultivate it. So therefore, we should make sure that our practice is very comprehensive. And somebody always into bodhicitta, 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 that is also wrong. I wouldn't say wrong, it's incomplete. Because without the wisdom of emptiness, again, it's incomplete. Okay, the, the, anyone who saw something somewhere in page 214 or somewhere. Okay, page 216. We should be very comprehensive, not be one-sided, either with bodhicitta or with emptiness or with the single point of meditation, whatever. Page 216, let us read this and then you will, will get it. <clears throat> this is said by a great Indian saint Saraha. Saint Saraha, page 216, last era, last stanza, page 216. Okay, so this is the great saint Saraha. Uh, great Saint Saraha was the teacher of Aranyagarjuna, Aranyagarjuna's teacher, right? So what he said, let us read it. So this will tell us how, how we should be comprehensive, how we should be comprehensive. Okay, it says, by entering into emptiness, but devoid of compassion. What's the problem? If you go into emptiness, emptiness, emptiness all the time, without compassion practice separately, one will not find the supreme path. So what is the supreme path? Buddhahood. Gade gade para gade para sam gade bodhisoha deep towards the Buddhahood. You will never find this because without the bodhicitta, you can't even start the bodhisattva path. Now, whereas on the other side, at the same time, by meditating upon compassion alone, compassion bodhicitta, compassion bodhicitta alone, one will not attain alone meaning, compassion without the wisdom of emptiness, one will, one will not attain liberation but remain in samsara. So finally, without the wisdom of emptiness, self-grasping ignorance cannot be severed. Without the self-grasping ignorance eliminated, we cannot be free from samsara. So compassion, compassion, bodhicitta, 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 without the wisdom of emptiness, we will continue to be in samsara, right? We will not be free from samsara. Okay. One will not attain liberation but remain in samsara. Whosoever is capable of grasping the unity of the two, which unity? Unity of which two? Practice of compassion and practice of wisdom. Unity of the two will not remain in samsara nor abide in personal nirvana. Meaning that will not remain in samsara. Why they will not remain in samsara? Because of the wisdom of emptiness. While they will not remain in the personal nirvana, meaning that same, oh, the sentient beings are suffering terribly and you are experiencing the great bliss of the, the nirvana. Right? And then just abiding, just absorbed, getting absorbed in the bliss of samsara, bliss of nirvana, and then forgetting the sentient beings. So that is known as personal nirvana. And as compared to the Buddhahood, even that is nothing. It's so insignificant. 
that we were just absorbed into into the the, the bliss of the nirvana. So that experience, as compared to the Buddha's Buddhahood, okay, let alone the Buddhahood, say even the experience of the, the Bodhisattvas, Bodhisattvas, Bodhisattvas experience the of okay, this described in Ashara Chandrakita's text, experience of someone, the Bodhisattva hearing a beggar asking for alms. So hearing that, oh, now I get the chance to benefit someone else. There's a tremendous joy. So this joy and the Arahats, Arahats experience the bliss of Nirvana, right? When compared to two, Arahats bliss of Nirvana is so insignificant as compared to the Bodhisattva experience a tremendous joy finding that now I get the opportunity to to serve someone, help someone. Okay, so the say because of the compassion, all will not be drained into the the personal nirvana, and because of the wisdom of emptiness, all will not be into the samsara. So you are free from the two extremes: extreme of samsara, which is acute pain, and extreme of personal selfish, let's say liberation. You'll be freed, and where do you go? You go to Bodhiswaha, which is a total enlightenment, enlightenment which is perfected with three qualities, perfect love, perfect knowledge, and perfect power. Okay, so the um, experience of the bliss, this the Buddha's experience is just far, 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 far greater as compared to, so it is like comparing, say, the fireflies, the, the light of the firefly, fireflies, and the light of the sun. It's like that much of comparison. Okay, with this what I'm saying is that our practice should be very comprehensive. Yet, while I'm emphasizing so much on this, should you encounter with any teacher or any other people who would teach you something like emptiness, something like Sumahamudra, so something like anything, and without the emphasis on bodhicitta, right, your job is still being grateful to that teacher because you are getting something. You are getting something. You should be feeling grateful to that teacher. And what you should be doing is that you should have the proper structure. Don't forget these teachings. These are the teachings of the great saints' constitution, right? Compassion, which emptiness should be complete. So there, you should be able to know what teachings you get from this teacher, put it where. What teaching you get from that teacher, put it where. That you should know, right? And then simply don't think that, oh, yes, this is what I've learned from, say, Jambi Bodhicitta about the Sensarahas teaching. And my teacher, this teacher, he did not teach about Bodhicitta. He's not emphasizing Bodhicitta. Instead of feeling gratitude, you just actually start to feel odd about your teacher. That is wrong. That is wrong. It is your job. Funny, you should be benefited. Well, you should be benefited. You should be able to uh, make the best use of whatever learning that you get from the other teachers. Okay, this is very important emphasis that I'll make here. So with that, the nine steps. Without the nine steps, yesterday we said that no class, today is going to be a holiday. Okay, nine steps on the fingertips, right? Okay, what are the nine steps? <clears throat> Um, equalizing self and others, reflecting on the demerits of cherishing oneself, reflecting on the merits of cherishing others, taking the suffering of others with the emphasis on compassion, then giving your, the practice of giving your happiness to others with emphasis on loving kindness, then actual exchange of the self and others, then what special recollection of the kindness of others, altruism, bodhicitta. Okay, so I see that like 60 or 65 percent have their own the fingertips. And uh, okay, 65 means it's more than 150 percent. That's good. Okay, those who are holding the mobile or holding the notebook, right? Okay, you are spared <clears throat> because of the remaining 65 percent. Okay, so with this now, and this practice of, and this practice, I would say that this the this method, method of equalizing and exchange, exchanges of others, this is particularly considered to be so precious, so precious. Okay, so the first equalizing self and others, and here, the practice should one should be as creative, 
one should be as creative, right? As creative, um, equalize itself and others. So we have to, it's an analytical meditation. We just ask ourselves, okay, so if, if me and my friends, meaning all of us, we are so thirsty, acutely thirsty, then if somebody brings a glass of water, there's only one glass of water, who has to drink it? Then what, what is my, what is my response? What is my response, right? Then we'll say, I like to have it, I like to have it, I like it. Very unlikely, very unlikely, people say that, oh, she will have it, he will have it, very unlikely. We'll say, I like to have it. And say, if the degree of the thirst is, say, 20%, you may say that, she likes to have it, he likes, oh, anyone, right? And if the degree of the thirst is 50%, I like to have it. And if the degree of the, then if somebody says, no, 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 I like to have it, yes, you, you go, you go ahead. If the degree of the thirst, thirst is 70%, if it increases 70%, then I'll have it. And if somebody says, I'll have it, then you start frowning at that person. Is of saying, go ahead. Okay. Now, if the degree of thirst is like 90%, right? What, who likes to have it? You say, I like to have it, and the other person, I like to have it, then you will fight. You will just really have a fist fight. Because of this, the degree of the thirst is so much, and the self-centered attitude is always there with us. So these two combined together will make you fight with the other person. Now, under such situation, why are you fighting with the other person? Because I'm feeling so thirsty, right? I'm feeling so thirsty. What about that person? That person also feeling so thirsty. That's true. Right? Now, what other reason do you have that you should be, you should be given the preference? That you are the priority. What other reason do you have? Yes. Yes, I'm more important than others. And the other person, ask him. He will say that I'm more important than this person. See? So now other reasons do you have to say that I deserve this water first? What other reasons do you have? We see that there's no extra reason. We are all just equal. The fact that we are suffering is because I like happiness, I don't want suffering. And the other person is also the same. There's no extra reason that makes me special. We are all just same. Think it very seriously. Think it very seriously. Right? And then say in your actually when going out, actually when you go out. When encounter with such situations where there's going to be say, say two or three people, and then uh, who's going to go first, right? And then see how your mind reacts. I'll go first, right? Okay. Say, uh, the an aeroplane, aeroplanes when we line up, right? If you just watch, how do people actually it's just the same? I don't really understand it. Sometimes even I also behave like this. I'm just, you know, laughing. So people, they just try to get them, get out first, right? Get out first. And then finally they end up, they end up the same, or the, the, say, outside the, outside the, the, outside the airplane, and they're all waiting for the bus. They got in the bus, same. same. Then, yeah, again, they try to get in the bus first, right? Get in the bus, and finally we all get to the, what? The luggage belt. So they, everyone say, unless the, the luggage comes, you have to wait there. Again, it's the same. I don't this human psyche that I should be first. Is nothing. It's a very clear indication that I am more important than others. We are not equal. There is. I'm more equal than equal. Right? I'm more equal than equal. So this feeling is there. This is what drives us crazy. Right? This is the seed. If we think very carefully, it's so totally senseless. It's totally senseless. And then getting to the aeroplane, again we... Again, just rush, right? Unless everybody is there, the, plane, the, the airplane would not move, right? To think very honestly, to think very the, rationally. So we think like this, we see that this is human psyche inside us. And that is the poison. That is the poison which gives rise to anger, which gives rise to you and I which stops us from having this compassion, which stops us from this beautiful mind of bodhicitta to grow within us, right? Okay, and such situation, this is a great opportunity. This is a great opportunity. We should really think of it very seriously, and that, okay, we are all just equal. He also wants to go first. She also wants to go first. Let him go, right? 
So Malaysia, very recently, Malaysia there, and thanks, it is all because of me, my meeting with this dharma, bodhicitta practice, that I'm at least able to think like this little bit. So there, the line was so, the queue was so long, it was a very long queue. The immigration, the immigration what, clearance. And then there was one lady, a young lady, with the maybe one week old child, child. And the, I think her sister or something, uh, and her husband with all these packages, and she was carrying this small child, and it was so humid and hot, and the immigration in the line was so long, the queue. And then I saw this lady, and nobody was, nobody was thinking of okay, letting her go first. Because at least if she could go first, then she would not have to stand this long and with the child. And she's worried about the child. The child is so young, maybe one or two weeks old. And then she was holding this very small portable fan to cool the child, right? Because of the heat. And holding the, holding the fan like this and the child there. And, she, and the child is crying. Then I saw this and I told the lady, go, go, go. So, as well, I, I was the, the immigration policeman. <laughs> I said, go, go, go. But I did not dare to go there and declare everything. The policeman may create problem on me. So, the I said, go, go, go. All these lines were shot at the shortcut and she went there. Okay, then the people there, they were not letting her to go. Right? They were hesitant, seeing the child there, very vulnerable child with a fan there. Um, they did not, even the thought was not really coming because they were not really trained that way. So therefore what I'm saying is that it is only through practice we have to deliberately cultivate it, otherwise it would not come naturally, right? So what I'm saying is that with this, just see, this is a great opportunity for us that, okay, how my mind reacts, just observe your mind, how my mind reacts, say, on the train, or on the bus, or you're on the airplane, so when the plane lands, then what's your reaction? If you pray, just when the same thing, right? Thing, which means now you can put off the, the belt and, and everybody stands up and busy lining there. And then that time is the opportunity for us. Just observe your mind, how mind reacts. How my mind reacts, right? I also want to go there, or line up. If that says, then just rationalize, work on the logic. Okay, what do you get by, by standing there and you get there and then uh, is there a special car for you waiting there? Who's ever gets first? Will you have a special car? This will take directly to your house? No? Again, you have to wait there. And then you have to, and worse, once you're in, the, once you're in the, the, that bus, you have to wait till the, the last passenger comes. You have to wait. It's so boring. Right? If you think like this. And then, so all people, they're already waiting there. And even if you come last there, unless the, the belt, the package is there, people, everybody has to be staying there. So you think like this. Then, why am I trying to rush? Why am I trying to rush? And if somebody rushes before you, what is your emotional reaction? What is your reaction? No, this person is trying to cut me. Right? So let him go. We're all equal. He also wants to go first. I also want to go first. We are the same. By no means I'm special. Just think like this. This is a great opportunity for us to, to practice the first step, equalizing self and others. Okay. So in fact, oftentimes I share, I share this anecdote with the, the participants of the Bodhisattva retreat. There was one amazingly enlightened, the Islamic Scandinavian Chirimbuche. I think he was the 90, I think, 98, 98, his oldness contained Rinpoche, amazing. Just see him, just see him, and uh, nobody, nobody wants to go away from him. The moment you get sight of his the face, the glow, the compassion, amazing. So, before, way before he became His Holiness Kandinchir Mbushin, and he was 
still, because of his knowledge, because of his practice, everybody revered him so much. And then he had his attendance. It was soon after the, 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 the loss of the, uh, the Tibet, invasion of Tibet by the Communist Chinese. So all escaped to, to India. And then the situation, India also, just a few, de- few years after independence, India also gained independence. It's just a few years, India was also in a very desperate situation. And then the Tibetans, His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, Tibetans, Tibet freshly invaded by the Communist Chinese and then came to India and a uh, very difficult situation. So then, then the situation was really very pathetic, very pathetic. So everybody just rushed through, I say, the train, the train, and first class, nobody heard what first class is, right? So just, there's one, okay, what, on the cabin, we call it compartment, cabin. So the cabin, who's ever first come, first serve places, right? There's no reservation, nothing. So whosoever is the physical mind muscle will get first there will get a seat, and others will not get a seat, and others have to keep standing for days on end. Some trains go for like three nights, three days. So you go like this. Okay. So the venerable teacher, he had his students, the monk students, younger ones, younger ones who are very strong, physically very strong. And then they would request the venerable to sit on the, the say, bench, then all the monks, they would be there, and all other passengers, they were all crowded there to get the first seat, right? Because I and you are not equal. For all the people there, I and you, they are not equal. I'm always there. They are, every one of us there, I'm more important, I'm more important like this. Okay. So, um, everyone is right. And then these young monks, they were together, so they would push all others away, push all others away, and make the way. Then the, the train comes and make way for the, 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 the venerable teacher to get there. And the venerable teacher would say, Oh, what are you doing? He would say, Sir, please. Then say, What about those people around you? Right? They are also going with us or they are not going? <laughs> and then they would say, Sir, now they understood what he meant. And I said, Sir, they are also going. <laughs> they are also going with us. Okay, so. Um, they also need seat. Then venerable sir, yes. Then sir, okay, let them go, let them go, let them go. Then all the monks come retreat. All the then, then the, the the train was jam packed, jam packed, meaning all the seats were already covered by the the occupied by other people. Then no seat, and venerable sir, the teacher would go in, and the monks again have to struggle <laughs> to make sure that he gets in. So this is the practical practice of bodhicitta that the venerable teacher was doing, right? So like this, he could see that we are all just equal. We are all just equal, not that I'm more important. That's illusion. In fact, this is what is creating all the problems for us. So this is the real practice that he's been doing, right? So this is what, um, see how much we, nowadays we don't really have to do like this. But they are, if you don't have this kind of scenario, then we don't get the opportunity to grow. So fortunately, we have now the word, the MRT, then the word, the aeroplane, all these things are there. So that's good. Still, we have the opportunity to grow, right? If it's the case that everyone has their own the chair, a chair, a chair aeroplane, everyone has their own chair aeroplane, and you press, press, and then the aeroplane chair goes there, we will not get this opportunity. Right? To practice equalizing certain others, right? And all the food and everything, we run to line there for paying the bills after buying the, the, the what? From the, the, after shopping, then you go to pay the bill, right? Pay the, pay the bill. So when you go there, you have to wait in line. And it's quite, sometimes when the line is too long, we become impatient, right? Now you press a button and everything comes by the drone. The food and everything comes by the drone, and you all the money transaction goes by the, the bank directly, right? If that happens, and you you have a aeroplane car, the watch share, you sit in there, you press the button, it moves wherever you like. We will not get the opportunity to to practice bodhicitta, particularly this method. So therefore, the fact that we have to line in queue, these are the opportunities to see that that okay, how my my mind reacts, how selfish I am. And this poison, this is a poison, this is a poison. So this is how we need to 
Oh, we need to the, the practice. Okay, safe journey, Madeline. Okay, then the. Okay. Okay, so this is equalizing self and others. This is equalizing self and others. So then how? See how our mind reacts, and on that basis, you just rationalize, rationalize, and tell yourself that okay, no, there's no reason that I should be the, I should, I should have the precedence, right? We are all just equal. Let them go first. Let them go first. The moment you say that, although your mind doesn't say no, 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 you go first. But then you deliberately say, let them go first. Right? You challenge yourself. You challenge your self-centered attitude. Let them go first. So then what happens is that slowly this, say for example, if you have a child, and the child also always wants to go first. Yes, we'll go first. And then you, some, you deliberately stay behind and ask the child to, to stay behind. Slowly the child will, right, will, being very active in always going first, will slow down. Likewise, the self-centered attitude will slowly slow down. Slowly slow down. When you always deliberately let others go first, let others have the, the opportunity, let others have the presidents like this, what is really happening is that you are giving the greatest benefit to yourself. Because what really harms us, what really brings unhappiness to us is this self-centered attitude. And you are, you are saying no to the self-centered attitude. Okay, this is what we should be doing. If this is what is what you're able to do, if this is what you're able to do, right? And then slowly over time, over time, um, over time. Now, if the with the same situation back, say some, say somebody brings water, just one glass of water, and you're all very thirsty, and who has to drink it? Then, if your natural tendency comes to your mind, that okay, we're all same. Right? You want to drink it? Okay. Shall I give it to her? Give. If this is how your mind reacts, how your mind responds later on through this practice, then you are successful with the first step. You are able to equalize certain others. Right? Or in this, you are, what we should be thinking in the meditation is that by no means I am more important than others. We are all just equal. Equal what? We want, we are equal in wanting happiness, equal in not wanting happiness, right? This you should gain conviction and then make a commitment. This is very analytical. Then, in the end, you say that in future, should I encounter with any situation, like lining up in queue and so forth, I will always, by no means, by no means, I will let myself to push forward. Because we are all equal in wanting happiness, not wanting the suffering. And I don't have any extra reason why I should be going to first. Just make commitments like this. Make commitment like this. Then in the actual practice, in the actual practice, when you actually go there, and then when you confront the situation, then observe your mind. Before you act, observe your mind. How my mind reacts. How my mind reacts. The response to this kind of situation. Again, the mind says, no, we should go. I should go first there. Right? Tell yourself, no. You want to go? Go. But I'll stay. You talk to your mind like this, right? And then slowly this self-centered attitude will cool down, will tone down, right? Okay, then we go to the next. What is the next step? Reflecting on the demerits of cherishing oneself. Okay, this is so important. This is so important. Then reflect on the demerits of cherishing oneself. Okay, let's see. Um, and... Here, as I said earlier, we should be very creative. And your life experiences, experiences that you, you encountered in your life, life which is relevant, you just bring them, enrich your practice by bringing those, the, your life experiences as much as possible. Not? Okay, let's say, self-centered, demerits of self-centered attitude, let's say. Um, one time, I think like, I think two years ago, or three years ago, three years ago in Delhi, what happened was that, what happened was that, um, a bus, the bus driver, drove the bus, and there was a motorcycle on the side, and the bus somehow scratched the motorcycle. 
And the, the biker, the young boy, is like 24, 27. He was so angry, he was so angry. Then he went there to, to fight with the bus driver. Then he was hitting the, the bus driver. And finally, he killed the bus driver. And his mother was with him. And the mother was also telling him, yes, hit him more, hit him more, hit him more. Okay. And then finally, both of them ended up in prison. The son and the mother both ended up in prison. Okay, now tell me, right? So oftentimes, our miseries, the problems that we go through, somehow, by no means, by no means, it is different from this. How it started, right? How it started and how it went and what is the end is much more the same. Most of the, the, most of the time, most of the time, it was like this. Okay, so just think very seriously. Overall speaking, we will see that if, if this boy, if this boy was like us today, like us today, not in this situation, not trying to decision, someone else was trying to decision, and this boy was watching like the way we are watching this scenario, um, for sure, this boy will think that, oh, the, the person who, who killed the, the bus driver, he was very stupid. Now he had to go to prison. He's along with the mother. Both of them were in, ended in prison. And what's this? Like the, the bike, just a scratch. Right? Just a scratch. And for this scratch, for this scratch, you're so unhappy. And then you said that, oh, I've got the scratch and I want to go to prison also. Right? I've already lost this. This bike, it is a scratch. Oh, I lost so much. I want to lose. I want to lose more. I want to go to prison. I want to lose my job. I want to lose my esteem. Right? This is exactly what he did. He went to prison, and he not only me. I'll also take my mother with the prison. I'll let her also suffer. Right? And he did it. He did it. And who forced them to go to prison? Nobody forced him to go to prison. If he did not behave like this, nobody will put him to prison. Even if he said, please put me in prison, I'm, I'm along with my mother. Everybody will think that you are a mentalist. They will take you to medical hospital. They will not take you to prison, right? But who brought them to prison? Who brought them to prison? Self-centered attitude. It did not do anything good to this boy. And we might have an illusion, illusion of satisfaction that I'm able to do away with this person who, who just hit my bike. And in the process, are you really very happy when you hit the other person, the other person also tries to hit you, right? And you're very unhappy, you're agitated, angry and so forth. And then finally you end up in prison, along with your mother, both of you. And this is how you repay the kindness of your mother, bringing the mother to the prison. What made you do that? No, nothing is only the self-centered attitude that I'm more important than you. I don't care about your life. As long as this, this bike, you just crash this bike and your, your, this bike is more important than you. And this thought, I am more important than, than you, that destroys himself, his mother, right? And then look, he has to feed his mother and he, he should have, he lost his job, right? And the, the job, at least like say, the, the, not, not just this job, the next next job, who's going to give him a job? When somebody knows that this person killed someone else, who is going to give him? Angry person, very short, tempered person, angry person who can easily kill you. And who will give you a job? You lose your job for the next whole year, whole life, right? Okay, this, this bike, even if you just abandon this bike, at the most it's like say, at 30,000 Indian rupees. And your, your job, who for whole money, minimum you're getting like two lakhs, three lakhs, so forth. And then you don't have to go to prison, right? So you can save like 100, 100 times what you've lost can be easily saved if you are able to calm, if you're able to maintain the calmness and peace, not give in to self-centered attitude. The moment you give in to self-centered attitude, this outcome, right? you, it made you totally blind and it gives us a total, it gives a false, false strength, false strength. And then when you, when your mind calms down, then you start regretting. You start regretting. And then who knows? The driver, he's not alone. He has his relatives, and amongst the relatives, there could be some very 
but shot tempered angry relatives could be there when they discover it was you who killed the father or the, the brother or whatever they will also kill you anytime next time and you are just inviting all these things because you gave into the self centered attitude if you think like this it's terrible it's terrible right so self centered attitude it does not do anything good to us to speak very honestly it doesn't do anything good to us it only attracts misery is not first of all it blinds you it blinds you of the reality number one number two if it gives you a false strength right and say a fire in a child's hand very dangerous fire in a child's hand is very dangerous so it blinds you it makes you like a small child because you don't see the reality now it gives you a false strength so dangerous then you engage and then all disaster happen in the end you regret okay this is because of the self centered attitude okay so with this with this say for example say um say to your for example say at home at home okay at home for example say you live with your parents say you live with your parents you are with your parents and in fact we are very fortunate that that some of you who have your parents with you still you are very fortunate very fortunate right for in my case in my case i lost my father 2005 2005 and i lost my mother when i was 5 years old so when i lost my father i was able to really to the best i could serve my father and i was very happy that i was able to serve my father because the buddha emphasizes so much on serving one's parents and then when i lost my father just the thought came to instead of worrying about my father because i was able to do, do the best i could to my father the the, the worry about or um, the little bit of say, the the pain or me not be able to do anything to my mother to my serve my mother when she was going through difficult times that was constantly coming to me very strongly strong so what i'm saying is that those of us here who have your who still have your parents with you you are very lucky you are very lucky now we don't know how long we are going to be with your parents be very direct right so we don't know how long you are going to be with your parents and don't think that oh since time i was born till now my parents were alive right okay so so it will go like this no don't think like this don't think like this. we never know how long you are going to be with your parents we never know right we okay, but we just raise your hands those who still have your parents with you still have your parents we're very lucky most of you have okay right most of you are very lucky i meant it Right? I really mean it. I really mean it. Very lucky. Now, with parents, there's a danger, and there's a plus point. The plus point is a great opportunity for you to accumulate enormous merit. The Buddha said that take care of take care of your parents, take care of your parents, and attend to the needs of your spouse and your children. This is what the Buddha said. Right? tremendous emphasis is placed on taking care of parents and also taking care of your spouse and your children this is so much emphasized by our very compassionate buddhist hakemani now the positive side is that we have a great opportunity to serve the parents amazing in my case i like to serve my parents no i can't do anything i can't do anything and then the same the family background wise because coming from the after the invasion of tibet by the communist chinese then my parents also fled and the, the the living situation was terribly poor terribly poor and i was okay i was very young then right i was just they, they were so young and most of the time spent time in school and uh, say okay then once in a while with the pen the, the situation is very poor okay then after finishing the geshe degree studies these things then started to travel like this and then the situation improved and then i was just wishing that my parents okay look my parents i'm already 50 years old right um my parents okay they lived such a very very poor life how i wish 
they are, they are now alive with me. How I wish that I could provide them with the the, the best of the the say the the rooms, the food, and everything the best. How I wish, but I can't do anything. Even if there's a tremendous urge within me to do that, where can I do it? For me, the money or whatever I have is just really like really so trivial. Because where should I use this? And wherever I travel, my friends, they provide the, you know, they organize all these things. And then, whereas if my parents are there, at least I would make them happy. They have not seen the, say, daylight. Even the mundane happiness, they did not have it. Right? So I just wish that much. And you, when you have your parents, it is a great opportunity for you. Now what we need to think of doing is that your parents are already aged. The same, the younger ones, younger ones, your, your parents may be aged like say 40, 50, so my age or a little less than my age, your parents are aged 60, 70. The moment somebody hits age that say 50, 60, don't expect the parents to change. Don't expect the parents to change, right? And you're not doing like this, right? You don't know how to do like this. Right? You're, you're not keeping this thing. You, you're not even keeping, even keeping yourself clean. Right? At least keep yourself clean. At least do it like this. At least speak like this. No, don't expect that the parents will change. Don't expect that. Now, same, same. If, if somebody is coming, for example, same. Now it is your time. It is your time to adjust. Don't expect the parents to adjust for you. Right? Don't expect the parents to adjust for you. Now, the parents, you don't know the difficulties of the, your parents. Because of the physical, physically they are aging. Because of this, they affect the psyche. Affect the psyche. Right? Now they've already seen the life. Now they want, they've already done everything for us. So now it is our, our job to make sure that Things should not be perfect. Don't expect everything physical, everything aesthetic, everything should be perfect. Don't expect that. Most important that you should keep in mind is that my parents' mind should be happy. That is the priority, not the things should be perfect. Right? By keeping things perfect, if your parents become so happy, make things perfect. If things are kept 80% perfect, 20% so-so, then your parents become happy. Keep it 80% perfect. Don't make it 100% perfect. That will create stress on the parents. Find the job of making things perfect is to make her happy, make him happy. And now it's creating problem. Right? So they know. Finally know that is a great... I'm so lucky that I still have my father and still have my mother. You, you should feel that. One. How long we are going to be together, we never know. Just this afternoon, I got a message that one of my cousins who was suffering from tuberculosis, no, the, the cancer, he passed away. We never know how long, how long we are going to be together, right? So your parents, likewise, we never know how long you're going to be together. While together, that moment together is so precious, so precious the one way, precious for you to make them happy, make them happy. This is the opportunity for you. This is opportunity. Then, then later on, you will regret. You will regret. I emphasize so much of the perfection that he, she should be like this, that he should be like this, but he did not do like this, he did not do like this, and so forth. And then she was so totally unhappy. He was totally unhappy. He could not you know, catch up with what I was expecting them to do. And then finally he passed away. And now I want, now I realize that now I realize this, the, her, his happiness, her happiness, that's the priority, not the perfection, external perfection, no, I realize this, now I want to make her happy, I want to make him happy, too late, you're gone. So, you should be so wise, while he or she is still with you, right? The priority should be that he or she should be happy. So for your children, don't, the priority should not be that he or she should be, should be happy. Then the children will say, I'll always be on the playground. I will not go to school, right? For them, perfection is very important. 
for your for your parents, don't go for the profession. Go for the happiness. That is a priority, right? This is so important. Don't forget it. Okay, but this. Okay, this is actually more from the side of the the other, the method, sinful cause of method. But this matter, this still is very uh, important related to this. Now, in this connection, in this connection, uh, let's say, let's say that, say for example, say, um, what does I remember? So these are all the anecdotes that you have to bring in to enrich your practice. Once I remember, me and one of my senior monks, amazingly great practitioner. Two of us are walking down a, a slope, down a road, a slopey road, walking down the road. And when we were somewhere in the middle, there was one very young boy cycling, and he did not have the brake. And it was just very steep slope, very steep slope. And the boy lost control of his cycle, and it's just running so fast. Right, and it hit the the venerable monk who was senior to me. He hit the monk, hit the monk, and the boy he himself lost control of the cycle, and he was he fell. And this venerable monk, what he what did he do? Just look at the natural, spontaneous response. Right, right. Otherwise, some people may then you may grab at the boy, you hit the boy, you hit me. You, without, without doing, how can you drive? Right? right? Then, then what he did? Is, I was so amazed. I was lost in admiration. The venerable monk he just dashed towards the, the boy, and he just picked up the boy to make sure that he 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 he, he, he did not hit the road. Right? He just picked up the boy, and said, are you okay? Are you, Are you hurt? Are you okay? Are you okay? And, and then he helped to, to lift the, the cycle also. Amazing, such a natural response. Very quick and natural response, right? So whereas, oftentimes, what happens is that, so even if you may not hit you seeing that the poor, poor boy <laughs> fell there, you may curse the boy and then leave, right? Right? If not hit, if not hit the boy, at least you make sure that this boy was cursed and you'll leave, right? And keep cursing. And meanwhile, you're not happy. Meanwhile, not ever cursing, you're not happy, right? And then I have to also say yes, 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 right? I have to also tell the, the, the other monk to make him happy. I should agree with him. If I disagree with him, he'll be more unhappy. So whereas so it's very opposite, right? right? So, now, so now, this thing, now see, right? This boy, he did not have the control. So he, he also, also did not want to, to he did not want to fall, right? right? And, and this is not what he was deliberately doing it. So, so under such situation, because, because of your compassion, compassion, because of compassion, because of this venerable, venerable monk's compassion, he was able to go there and the, the boy, for sure, right? right? The fear of falling, one, the fear of the venerable monk hitting you, these two fears were there, no doubt. So when the monk, when he was holding him, rather, you know, rather than hitting him, holding him, telling him, are you okay, are you hurt, right? So one fear is gone. And even the second fear, falling, he was held by the venerable monk. And then because of the love and affection that he felt from the venerable monk, right, his other fear also disappeared. He was, he was so happy. Right? Okay. okay, so look at this scenario. From there, we see that the more we act out of self-centered attitude, it will destroy others, it will destroy yourself. Right? The more we act out of other cherishing, compassion, so forth, it helps others, it helps yourself to maintain your calmness. Right? Okay, so with this, with this, what we need to keep in mind is that, say, the that now, if you think of our same life, our life, same, what for we are working, what for we are, we have to look for jobs, what for we have to go for shopping, what for we have to go to the medical hospitals, what for we have to go to go for annual checkup and so forth. If you, if you examine well, if you examine well, we see that one. We see that, or we see that, uh, we see that the, the, for the jobs and so forth, we need the wealth, right? We need the material resources. And the material resources, even you have, there's a danger that any time we can lose this material resource, 
bank liquidation. Uh, for example, say the what the 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 what the global economy crisis, right? In fact, there was one person. Um, he was a Nobel laureate, Nobel Peace laureate. Overnight, he lost fifteen million dollars. Overnight, overnight, because of the the what the global economic crisis. Overnight. Overnight, he did not do anything. But the next day, the bank sent a letter saying that you lost your 15, 15 million dollars. Finish. You can't do anything. Right? So what do you have? You can be separate from it any time. And we don't have. We have to go to have it. What form? Because what form? Because with this. We have a national desire not to die, that we should live, right? For living, for the body, we need the material resources. And the material resources, right, say one is the outcome of the, our effort, our effort. But what is behind? Well, some people, they work so hard. They work so hard, they get something and they, somehow they lose it so easily. They lose it so easily, either through, either through, say, the what, what do you call it, the either through your, the partners deceiving you, right? For any, for any other reason, for any reason, so somehow you get something, you lose it. You get it, you lose it, right? Okay. So there are two reasons, there are two factors. One is the immediate factor, immediate factor. For example, say if you don't work, nothing will come. You have to work. By working, some people they get what you want. Some people they don't get what they want, right? So work per se doesn't guarantee that you're going to get what you want. Right? right? Okay. okay. So now, so now there's a, another, another factor, factor. Not, just not just immediate effort. effort. There is another factor known as the karma. 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 What karma? What kind of karma? So, so the, they say the wealth, the wealth which we, we need for to sustain a body, to sustain a body. That wealth is the result. The hidden, the hidden cause, the hidden cause for the, the wealth is the generosity. Right? The immediate cause is your effort. Immediate cause is your effort. Either your effort or your parents' the inheritance or your effort. Right? But the hidden cause is your karma. What karma? The karma of generosity. Karma generosity. So therefore, with the practice of generosity, with this practice, only then you can have the wealth which you which you want, which you seek. So, the generosity is possible. Now look, generosity is possible only in connection. Only if generosity happens, only if you have a feeling of wanting to help others. Wanting to help others means the self-centered attitude, right? Self-centered attitude is toned down. Toned down. So, where is with the self sad attitude so strongly there, what happens is that you would not engage in generosity. Right? With the self sad attitude very strong, you would not engage in generosity because you would not feel the love and affection caring towards others. You would not engage in generosity. Without generosity, the result is no wealth. You suffer from deprivation of wealth in the future. So, same, why? Why we come with such a situation of the deprivation of wealth and so forth, resources and so forth, is because of our lack of engaging in the, say, generosity in the past lives. And what made, what made us not engage in generosity is because of the self-centered attitude. So, this self-centered attitude is one which attracts, which attracts poverty. Which attracts poverty, and nobody wants to suffer poverty. One. So, this is how we need to think more. And then, same, same, same. When we when we take birth as a human being, we want to live long. We want to have a healthy, long life. Longevity is what we see. And then, say, uh, some people have long life, and some people, um, even some, some people who have all the material resources, the best of the doctors, the best of the hospitals, still they do not live as long.
but some people, they physically, they may be so poor, materially, they may be so poor, or somehow they live 80 years, 90 years, like this, very long, and, and they're too very happy, a long life. Okay, okay. now, what is that factor? So that is out of, say, your action, your karma of, of assisting others medically. Your, your karma, karma your, with pure with heart, heart helping others medically, medically assisting, assisting others to provide, to provide medical resources, medical help, and then, and then nursing, nursing them, them, and so forth, out of pure heart. Right? So when, so when that, that happens, happens, then naturally, then naturally that, that, that becomes, becomes the hidden cause, hidden cause for, your for your next life to have a long life. Long life. In, fact, In fact, even the doctors cannot really explain fully. Doctors, doctors saying, saying you go to the personal doctors, doctors if you ask why why, why, why this person who has the, 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 who has all the material resources, resources the best of the, the health care, insurance, insurance, the, the, the doctors, the, the hospital and so forth, but the person lived did, did not live as long, but this the, the, the poor person lived so long, so why so how do you account account for this medically? No explanation. Explanation, right? So, the, so there, there's a hidden cause. cause. Hidden cause is the own, own karma of the, the say, providing, providing medical assistance to other people, and then, and then at least mentally, if nothing is there, at least mentally you are supporting someone else, else to live long, so they, consoling, helping so others, and so forth. So these are the causes for you to live to have longevity in your next life, and so forth. And then the say, where is? Where is? If you don't. Where, where you see, see someone really in need of your help, and you just, and you just ignore, ignore this, where the person, where the person is, is in a desperate, desperate, desperate situation, you need, you need of medical help and so forth, and you can't do it and you don't do it, right? right? Then, what then what is happening? This is happening, this is happening so because of your lack of kindness. What makes, what makes you have lack of kindness? Because of the self-centered self attitude. So this, so this forbids you from assisting, assisting others, and because, and because of which you are not able to accumulate, accumulate that cause, that cause, that cause which, will which will otherwise make you to have a longevity, longevity, long life, the next, the next life. life. So, because so because of lack of this cause, next life, next life you may not have a long life, you may not, you may not have a healthy life. So, so what, what made you, what made you have this unhealthy short life, short life was because of the, again, back, the self-centered self attitude. And then, and then say, harming others, harming others primarily, primarily harming others, others that's the cause of taking birth in the lower realms. Harming, harming, others. harming others, thinking badly about other people, other people. Harming, harming, harming others, and so forth. And so, forth. So, these so these are the causes for the, the same, the, same, the Unhealthy, unhealthy birth the time. next time. So therefore, and this harming others comes about by seeing the division, you and I, I'm more important, you are less important. And you are harming me, you should not be there, I should destroy you. So this thought harming others, that is one which is responsible for making us to take birth in the lower realms. So with this, we see that harming others is, this comes to us only because of the self-centered attitude. So from this we see that self-centered attitude, it does not do anything good to us. What we want is material resources, and it we are deprived of material resources because of the stinginess given rise to by the self-centered attitude. And then we want to have a favorable, healthy, good birth, and we are deprived of that because of our harming others in the past lives, and harming others. That in turn is because of the self-centered attitude. And then say the, the radiance. Some people, Some people have the the radiance. 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 Just, Just for example, as I said earlier, Gendam Rimba, one of my teachers. When you look, when at, you look him, at him in crowd, you could see that the there's a radiance there. there. He just, just stand, he just, he just stood, out stood out from the, 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 crowd. the crowd. Okay. okay. So, so this radiance is because, is because of the practice of the patience. patience. And then, and then we are so patient. impatient, right? right? And, and no patience. Okay. okay. That's, That's, so this, so this patience, patience, this practice of patience, gives us, gives us the radiance in your, as a result, in the future lives. And then, and then why we don't have the radiance is because of our being impatient, act of impatience in a former life. Why impatient? Who made you to be impatient? Because of self-centered attitude. Right? I should go first. Right? I cannot be patient, that patient. I'm sorry. So, so you are as well like so courageous, so bold, they're saying this. Actually, this self-centered attitude is saying that you should suffer in the next life. Right? right? 
and we are totally blinded by this self-centered attitude. Okay. Next is the practice of the enthusiasm. Same practice of generosity, ethical discipline of not harming others, the practice of patience, the practice of enthusiasm. The practice of enthusiasm results in the elegance, elegance of your appearance. Radiance and elegance, elegance is a slightly different form. One is the radiance and the other one is elegance. So, with the practice of enthusiasm, elegance. Elegance is because of the practice of enthusiasm. What is enthusiasm? Joy, finding joy in virtue. And then, okay, what virtue? Then you, what we feel so, you know, say, bored, right? When do something negative, we become excited. Right? We become excited with something good things. Then you feel, we feel a little bored like this. There's no enthusiasm in virtue. So, so lack of enthusiasm. Why no? Why no enthusiasm of the virtue? Virtue is what to help others and so forth. Other cherishing, mostly other cherishing, right? So, why you? Why your mind is not really keen towards the virtue? Not finding joy in virtue, because of the there's no affection, love, and affection towards others. Why no affection towards others? Because of the self-centered attitude. Again, we see that self-centered attitude is one which forbids us from practicing enthusiasm, finding joy and virtue, and because of which we don't have the result of that, the, say, elegance. So we've been deprived of the elegance is because of the self-centered attitude. Okay. What after enthusiasm? Meditative concentration. Meditative concentration. Meditative concentration is what? Okay, same. Um, same. So your neighbor, your neighbor, Bang the, bang the door, door right? <laughs> and maybe the may, neighbor might have, have a fight with her her husband or his wife, right? And bang the door, and then you are they don't mean to hurt you, but you are the neighbor, and you hear this this the door being slammed so loudly, right? And then you fell. So bad. so bad, you feel so bad, right? You feel angry towards the other person. Okay. And then, oh, now it's my time for meditation. Now it's my time for meditation. You say meditation. Then you could constantly hear this bang, the door slamming, right? And then, where is your meditation? Your meditation is disturbed, right? You feel so angry towards the person. They don't even even have this courtesy to respect the, the, the neighbors. Who is that neighbor? I. Right? right? I. Right? right? In, fact, in fact, this is happening everywhere. Millions of houses, the buildings, the, the what? The flags, this is happening. And we never thought about it. And today, he said, you, he does not even have a courtesy to respect the, the this much of respect to the, the neighbor. And who is this neighbor? This important eye. Right? So this I. Okay. okay. So with this, then, with this, then you, meditate. you meditate. Where is your meditation? No meditation. Your mind is always about this. How should I? Next time, how, how should I hurt this person? Right? How should I show my face to him? Right? All these you are meditating on these things. Where is the meditation? Where is the point of meditation? There's no. So when your mind is agitated, your mind is agitated. Agitated means your mind is like uh, the, the very rough waves. When your mind is in the form of rough waves, where is the stillness of the ocean? And what creates these rough waves? Because of the agitation. What, agi what creates this agitation? Because of self-centered attitude. Right? These very important neighbors here. Very important neighbors here. Whereas, if you have a sense of concern, at least a real sense of courtesy within you, right? Because, okay, that person might have a, so from the how the, the, the door was slammed, right? Girl will not stand like this. It must be the, the, the men, right? So the men might have difficult time with the the, the women, the what, the, 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 the wife, over the children or whatever. Okay, yeah, this is understandable. This was sometimes also happening with my family, right? So you understand it. You understand, okay, this thing can happen to anyone. Right, and for sure, he does. He will not like to break his own the door, right? Break his own door, but still doing it, which means that there must be a, a big problem there. He must be very unhappy. So I am very sorry for him, right? If you think like this, then the meditation, your mind is calm. 
that you can do with meditation. So what made you to... Meditation is what? Meditation is to quell your mind. Quell your mind, to still your mind. Right, single body meditation, particular single body meditation is to still your mind. And now, right before stilling your mind, you have already activated your mind. Already stirred, stirred your, mind. your mind. Stirring, stirring the, mind the mind is the opposite of stilling mind. the mind. Right? right? So, what, so made what made you to stir your, your mind? mind? What made you not to have the meditation? Because of having stirred the mind. What made you stir the mind? Because of the anger. What made you have the anger? Because of the self centered attitude. With the self centered attitude, it will simply destroy your, say, samadhi, no samadhi. With samadhi, peace of mind is what we get, what we want. We want peace of mind or we want disturbed mind. We want peace of mind. And yet, you are depriving yourself of the peace of mind by not having the samadhi because of the self centered attitude. Okay, finally, what? The wisdom, the wisdom, right? right? Wisdom, wisdom of what? Wisdom, wisdom, wisdom to see things as illusion like, right? right? Okay, okay, now, with this anger, self-centered, self-centered attitude, what happens? That self-centered attitude, that I am more important than you, it has already decided to find the self as objectively real. And that person is the one who harmed me, solidify the other person. This act of harming solidified. So, because of this anger, it helps you to solidify things. Solidify things, and you are practicing meditation on wisdom for what? To disolidify. And yet, self centered attitude says, No, 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 don't go after the wisdom. No, let us see. Let me see how to solidify things. Objectify things. So, this self centered attitude helps you to solidify things, to make things objectively real. Once you see things objectively real, you can never get out of samsara. And whose job is that? Self centered attitude. The job of the self centered attitude is to make sure this cross self centered attitude is to make sure that you don't get out of samsara, that you continue to suffer by objectifying things for you. Right? So, wisdom of emptiness is far away. From us. So, we see, so we see that what really, what really attracts, attracts good things for you is generosity, generosity ethical discipline, discipline patience, patience, enthusiasm, enthusiasm meditative concentration, concentration, and the wisdom. And, wisdom. and, all, and these all these are being destroyed by, by the self centered attitude. attitude right? right? So, we so we want material resources. And, and uh, we don't, we don't get, get as much as what we, what we, what we expect, expect, right? right? It's, all because it's all because of the self centered attitude. If you really want to curse someone for you not getting the job or whatever, it's because of the self centered attitude. It's not that those people who don't get the job and those people, those people who don't get the job, they have a give greater self centered attitude. Others are less self centered. That's not true. It's just a matter of time. Now, as, long as long as some, some, some self-centered attitude can be in the worst of the corruption, right? right? With, with corruption, right? right? If, unless, unless, the unless the government arrests you, arrest you, you don't, you don't worry, worry about the money, right? right? With corruption. With corruption. But, but that is accumulated so much of negative karma that, that you'll be deprived of even the basic necessities in the future life, not only one life, many, 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 many lifetimes. Life right? Right. So, so all these, all these things happen because, because of the self-centered attitude. And we need, and we need good, help. good help. We're all concerned with help. And we see that we hear about, okay, um, so okay, I'm constantly receiving emails saying that one of my friends is having this AMD problem, the, say, um, this problem, this problem, another friend, this problem, constantly like this. So if you think carefully, these things are all because of, you know, say, the finally, finally, what we dislike, the all attracted by self-centered attitude. Now, now, now see, it is like arrow, arrow being, being shot, shot in the air. air. Arrow, arrow being, being shot in the air. air. When the arrow, when arrow is shot in the air, air don't expect to hold this arrow, right? right? So, now, so now, arrow is like, like the karmas which we have already accumulated in the past. Right. right. Many, many of the many of the, many of the karmas, karmas they are still not yet, yet still, still not yet shot. shot. They are still with us. And some, and some of the arrows, arrows some, the, some of the karmas, they are already shot in the air. Now, 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 what, now what is the what is the what is the, what is the outcome? That the arrows, arrows only wait for, wait the, for the time to hit hit you, hit you right? right? Hit, you hit you in the form of poverty, in the form of the same the, the, the unhappiness of your mind, mental unease, mental irritation, agitation, so forth. So. 
See, it's just a matter, matter of time for us. Now, what we can really do is by reflecting on the deep values of cherishing the self. Cherishing the self. I said, now I see that all of these miserable things that I'm going through is all because of this self-centered attitude, right? And don't see that, oh, this person is going through this problem because of self-centered attitude. Don't turn your finger to his outside. Turn towards yourself. When you see others going through miserable, the, the miserable state, you go there and help. Don't think about, oh, these people are going through because of the self-centered attitude, because of the karma. This is not, this should not be an attitude. When you do see others going through miserable state, you go there and help. Right? right? Yeah. Help. And, and funny, funny it's, not it's not a matter whether somebody, somebody is suffering, somebody, somebody is going through, going through self-centered self attitude. This is this not the issue. The issue, the issue is whether, whether what, you what you want, what you want. I want happiness. What do you don't want? I don't want suffering. This is the basic line. This is the basic. This is the benchmark. Right? Work on that. Don't work on, oh, they are suffering because of the self-centered attitude. This is not your business. Your business is, your business is that, I that I want happiness, I don't want suffering. This is the, this is the basic line. line. On that basis, work, work to, see to see what attracts the miseries. My own self-centered attitude, remove them. What attracts the, 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 the good things is my, is my say, say, for example, we are healthy at the moment. Even this could help. Say you are in age 20s, age 30s, 40s. And how many people are there? How many youngsters, age, teenage, teenage going through cancer? Suffering, suffering, suffering cancer, suffering, suffering AIDS, 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 and these problems. And, and but here, the younger ones, the younger ones you are very healthy. And then, and then in 30s, 40s, 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 very healthy. In 50s, 50s, 60s, you are very healthy, right? right? Which, means Which means that this is because of the good karma. Good karma is accumulated because of the other cherishing mind. Other cherishing mind. So, what the good things that I have is because of other cherishing mind. So, I should nurture, I should encourage this other cherishing mind even more. And all the bad things I attract is because of self centered attitude. I would say no to self the attitude. Right? This should be our job. So with this, in future, if anything bad happens to you, instead of blaming outside, and particularly at home, blaming your mother, blaming your father, right? Instead of that, the blame should go towards the self and the attitude within me. Right? Okay. For example, say, okay. Um, okay, say, Say the, say the, the, cup, is the cup is here, the cup is... The cup is and then, and then by talking, talking, when I talk with my, with my hand movement, the cup, the cup falls, falls, the cup breaks, breaks and a piece hits, hits me and say, and say there's, there's a cup, a cup there, there in my hand. Right? right? Oftentimes, Oftentimes the, whoever is the next there is the victim. Is the victim. Whoever is next there is the victim of my courage. Oh, because of when are there, that this fell. When I is there, because of it, it falls, it, falls, it, fell, it fell, and then it breaks. It's, it's because of Venma. Right? right? Not, that, not my that my hand hit it, hit it right? right? My, my, I, being I being very mindless, very mindless not, being mindful, not being mindful, and hit it, and, hit it, and it fell. And it no, fell. It doesn't, my mind doesn't go in that direction. It goes towards the other direction. Because Venma was there, because of this, it fell, and then it hit me. Then you curse him again all the all the time. Because of him, that this, this happened. Actually, it's because of my mind lacking mindfulness. Right? So this is how we react. Now, be mindful. So whenever bad things happen, instead of blaming others, see if you can turn the blame towards the Don't turn the blame towards the self. Turn the blame towards self-centered attitude. If there's a cut happening, it can fall, but it may not break. But today it breaks. Not only breaks the piece, just as though well like somebody hit it to me directly. Right? Piece somehow flew and hit my hand and it cut. For sure, For sure it was attracted by the self-centered attitude. I'm having the pain. This pain is because of the self-centered attitude. You feel angry towards the self-centered attitude, right? Okay. If you really want to feel angry towards someone, feel angry towards the self-centered attitude. If you feel that, the difference between feeling angry towards someone else and feeling angry towards the self-centered attitude, the difference is that feeling angry towards someone else, your mind is agitated. Feeling angry towards the self-centered attitude, your mind gets confidence. You feel, the, you feel the confidence, you feel the, you feel the strength, you feel the, strength, you feel the calm. This is, this is the difference. Right? Right? So, if that, so if that happens, this is the clear indication that, that your mind is, is turning towards dharma. Right? This, right? So this is so precious. Okay. okay.
So in your own life, you, whatever anecdotes, whatever incidents happened um, the, around other people, around you, where, because of self-centered attitude, misery is attracted, misery is attracted, right? Okay, tell me the incident which I told you last time about that person, right, who was suffering terribly in this, with the roof licking house, with no running water, with no, the what? The bathroom, right? And while at the same time the person was offered a proper house there, still suffering there, tell me, how would you relate this to the self-centered attitude, the suffering? How? Because? If I leave, then the owner will give this, room, this, this house to someone else. Then I will not get this house. And this house I'm getting for a very cheap rent. Who is getting this for cheap rent? I am getting it for a cheap rent. I. And somebody else will also get it, it for a cheap rent, right? No, no, no. I should get it for cheap rent. I. This is how self-centered attitude imprisons us. Imprisons us. Right? Okay. So if you think like this, for example, let's say, let's say, right? Let's say, this one, another example, this is what happens oftentimes in the families, between the, between the husband and wife, between the parents and children, between the brothers and sisters, right? Okay. Say, for example, say, um, say, I'm holding this hot coffee or hot tea, and then suddenly it fell, and it fell. And then the other side, right? Husband, wife, mother, father, brother, sister, whoever, right? What is their response? Oh, you broke the very, very expensive cup, right? The thought does not come that he or she might have hurt his or her legs. They must be burned. Cases. Right? Oh, you've broken the very expensive cup and then you keep worrying about this cup. Look at this. Right? Not at all looking at the, 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 the person's hurt. Right? Okay. So now tell me if you do like this, if you do like this, you are paying importance to the person or to the monk. To the mug. Why? To the mug. Because this is my mug, very expensive. My mug, my, my, because of mine. Right? And whereas, and then by doing so, what would be the response of the other person who was hurt? What is the response? This person does not love me. You're getting it? This is a natural response he displayed, she displayed. She does not love me. She loves the mug more than I. He loves the mug more than I. This is the next response, right? Deep inside, there's an injury happening to the other person. Next time, something happens to you. This injury is there. This injury will become manifest, right? We'll say, we'll say, we'll say, person will say the same thing. Oh, my mug. Right? right? And, then and you will not be taken care of. You will feel the pain. What made, what made you feel the pain? Because, because of your gesture of not showing concern to the other person earlier. So, so this thing creates a rift. Self-centered attitude is one which creates a rift between you and others. And because of which you like the other's affection. The fact that the other people they don't love you because of the self-centered attitude. Right? So this is what we need to keep in mind. Instead, Although this, although you know that, for example, although you know that that this is the one which I got from, say, which I got from, say, uh, the, the time of the Buddha Shakyamuni, the monk, the time of Buddha Shakyamuni, somewhere from the history, there's a history there with this monk, right? History that I always cherish it, right? Always so lock it there, lock it. One day I said that, okay, your birthday, so I allow you to use it. And you break it, right? You break it. Now you think that he's going to fire me. Instead of firing you, if I said, are you not hurt, right? Forget about the mind, it's fine. Are you not hurt? Are you okay? And then you see whether the, the legs, everything is fine, the feet, the, the hand, everything is fine. I'm so happy. Thank you that you are not hurt. I'm so happy. What's your response? Wow, there's a, the real genuine affection is there. You feel, you could feel it, right? Then the family is going to be very different. Just from right there, the family is going to be much more cordial, much more warm, right? 
automatically, automatically instantly, instantly the family will be changed into a very warm family, family. Instantly. instantly. And this, and this is, is a very profound imprint laid in the mind of the other person, the person will never forget throughout his or her life. This is so precious. It's all coming because of the other cherished mind. You're getting it? With the self-cherished mind, it will. it's the same incident. Now, now how you react depends on other cherished mind, whether you have other cherished mind or self cherished mind. With the self cherished mind, it is going to destroy the whole. The cup is lost. You shout at the other person, the cup will not come back. 100% the cup will not come back. Right? And on top of the cup, not, you lost the cup, you lose your peace of mind. Right? This anger, right? You buy one, get one free. Yeah, you, this is loss. And then, now, and then this now this anger is again giving you free. One free misery. Agitation, anger, agitation. But whereas other cherish mind, it doesn't matter. What is this? What is this? When I die, I cannot take this. This is at the time of the Buddha. I cannot take this with me. I cannot take this with me. Right? What is this? It's fine. You're okay. You're okay. Then look. Just look at the glow at the face of this person. And the love and affection the person radiates through your eyes. This is something which you will never find. Even if you pay billions of dollars, this will this beautiful the face of gratitude, the face of love and affection. You will never get it from anywhere. This is so precious. And you're getting it because of your love and affection. You radiate it from the other person's face. This is so precious. Okay, so likewise in the family, this is how we can usually there are fights happening. Just over trivial, trivial things. Just over trivial, trivial things. Okay, once what happened was that there was, uh, okay, a highly, highly respected professor, right? Highly, highly respected professor. I'm not going to mention name. And one day, Okay, but one day he was insisting me, Dorji, you must come to my house. So weird. Dorji, you must come. He is such a respected professor, such a respected professor. Okay. Dorji, you must come to my house. You must stay with me. You must stay with me for at least two or three days. So weird. I did not ask for ask for that, and he's insisting me. And then finally, I, call, I asked him, okay, now you have to call your, uh, the, call your wife that you're coming. He said, no, 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 no. Then we were driving. And then we were almost reaching there to his house. I asked him, okay, call your wife. It's not good that you are coming and you are bringing me. Tell your wife. He said, no, 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 no. We got in. And then I already stayed with them. I think the, the one year ago for five days already. Uh, actually, it was meant to be like three days. No, two days. And the he again sent he again came to tell me, Dorji, please stay for three more days. It was his wife. His wife said that it is so pleasant. It is so pleasant. It's just learning so much from him. There's so much to learn because we have constant discussions happening. So so much to learn and so forth. So. I said, no, I have that thing to do. And also, I already paid for that, the, the room, yeah, the guest house. He said, it doesn't matter. So please. So I said, OK, just to make him happy. And I was there for five days. And then after about one year, again, he was insisting me, Torsi, you must stay with me. So I went there. And I did not know what was the agenda behind. And then he entered the room. Usually, the wife was just glowing with happiness when the when she sees me and then I entered I said uh, okay I'm not going to tell the name I greeted her with her name and she said okay welcome welcome Dorji welcome welcome Dorji no glow there okay it's fine so um, there may be any reason right and then I was in the living room and suddenly she started to shout because, because I said, I said, I said the, 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 the person's name is, the person is Indian. Person is Indian. So, I'll so I'll change the name, Mr. Chen. Mr. Chen. <laughs> right? So I said, oh, oh uh, G, G, G is a very honorific, very, very honorific, right? In Tibetan it's La, La is not as heavy as G. G is very heavy. So respectable people, only then you call G or H-wise, much, much older. Then I called, 
Oh, oh yeah, Mr. Mr. Chenji. The voice shouted, saying that Dorji, don't call him G. He doesn't deserve G. <laughs> then I realized why he called me there. <laughs> Then I realized why he called me there. Okay, I was the shield. Because if I was there, he was not going to be as much fired by the wife, right? Although going to be bound to be fired, but not going to be as much fired, right? So that was the reason why he brought me there. Then I realized, I see, I was the shield. Okay, then I was... Okay, okay, then I didn't, then I didn't anything. say anything, I just, just remained calm. calm. And then, and then the husband, the husband uh, he just, uh, he just misplaced his, his, his wallet. And he was, and he was asking the wife, oh, did, oh, you, did you see my wallet? wallet? And, she and she said no. Okay, okay discussions, discussions happen. And then, and then he said that, he said that oh, oh, I don't find, find my wallet the last, last say, one day, day something like that. that. Now, now I, I have to go to the bank to make sure that all these cards, they are being stopped from operation. Then suddenly, then suddenly the gentleman found the, the wallet somewhere. 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 Then he started to shout at the wife, saying that, you put it there. And she said, no, I did not even touch it. Yes, you put it there. <laughs> I thought, right, I thought, okay, it's so good that you found it. You rejoice in having found this. Rather the shouting, right? And in it is by shouting, this will not go back to the the person not the wallet will not go back to the original place. Right? It will not go back there. And then she will shout at you even more. Right? She's more successful in shouting. So yeah. So she will shout even more. You are just attracting, inviting her to shout at you. Right? But just oh, oh. <laughs> what unnecessary just, just unnecessary. Just two couple there. Two couple, couple days, every, every time, time fighting, fighting over just trivial things, things, right? Okay, okay I'm, I'm very happy, happy that I found it. Oh, it's, oh, not, it's lost, not lost, right? right? And, and the wife should be saying, oh, so good, so good, it's there. there. And he should be saying, I'm so happy that it's not lost, it's there, right? Rather than you left it there. She said, no, I did not left it. I did not left it. I did not left it there. You left it. I did not. Then it's escalated, escalated. Exhausting. I was already exhausted. I simply want to run away. <laughs> I simply wanted to run away. Okay, it's so exhausting. So do instead, if you said, I'm, so, I'm so happy that you did not, did not lose your wallet. It's safe there. And then you should also, also say that all the thank is in the home. It's in the home right there. I thought it's so good, right? So then finish. Then the, then the family is very happy. Just a couple, just a couple husband, wife, husband, wife, very happy. Very happy. You don't want to you don't fight. Want to fight. Oh. Oh. So therefore, so therefore we, see we see that how you respond, how you respond, how you respond, how you respond. It's, it's not that they don't love each other. other. They love each other, each so, other much. so much. But, but the feeling of closeness is taken, is taken for granted. And the secondary, and the secondary things, things, they put them on the surface, put them, put them as priority, and then fight them. over these trivial things. It's all, it's all because deep inside, deep inside there's, there's a selfishness, selfishness there. there. Right? right? Selfishness there. there. Okay. okay. So, so therefore, selfishness, selfishness only attracts misery. It makes, it makes you simply, you are the, you are the, almost, almost like, like not really the greatest, greatest of the professor, but you are such a highly, highly, highly respected professor there, right? 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 And, even and even such a professor is blinded to see the, the reality, to see, to see what is trivial as trivial, blinded, blinded by this feeling of the same, the, 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 what, the whatever, whatever right? right? So finally, so finally rooted, rooted to this self-centered attitude. So look, self-centered self attitude, it does, it does not do anything, anything good to us. us. It only attracts miseries and unhappiness in us, right? right? So, this so this is how we have to think about the, the, the drawbacks, the demerits of cherishing the self, right? And then say, getting, getting, getting trapped in the hands of the terrorists. You can't believe, you can't believe getting trapped in the hands of the terrorists. What will happen to you next moment? We don't know. And getting in the hands of the KFC, the poor chickens, and the animals in the, animals in the, the slaughterhouse. They, have, they don't know what the next moment is. They will lose their life. Right? right? So, so these are all finally, finally, these are all, and it's not that they are unlucky ones, we are very lucky ones. No, it's just a matter of time. 
as long as we fall prey to the self-grasping ignorance, we are bound. It's just a matter of same, the same, uh, the wooden lock. Sometimes go uh, goes up in the ocean. It can goes up. Sometimes it goes down. Sometimes it goes up. It's just a matter of time. It goes up, goes down, goes up, goes down. Like why sometimes we are in the hands of the terrorists. Like, you know, like sometimes we are in the midst of the earthquake. Sometimes we are in the midst of the tsunami. Sometimes we are in the midst of the wildfire. Sometimes let say we are midst in the say, just you to go they say the unhealthy water. You get sick, right? Terrible sick. And then they say you go to hospital. And somehow the although the hospital is so well managed and thing, but then somehow there's one person who was newly joined and who was not so proficient and also the the negligence and then the same the blood your blood and other person's blood is too confused and then you are you are not at all having cancer or the what the the AIDS and then the doctor says you have AIDS and then you take lots of medicines and then it it, it just kills your immune system all these unfair we never know now thing is really in our hand so we have to try our best but nothing is really in our hand so who decides Self-centered attitude and other cherished mind, these two decide. But the other cherished mind, even if you are in a hospital which is not really well facilitated, where you, because you cannot pay as much, but everything automatically goes so well, and then just within like say ten sing dollars, you're able to to recover from all the the terrible illnesses. Where somebody else just having a cold, you have to spend like hundred thousand ten sing dollars and still not recovering. So we never know what is what. So it's all finally decided by self-centered attitude and other cherished mind. Right now. As I said earlier, air is already shot in the air. Air is already shot in the air. What is shot in the air, we can't do as much. But what can be done is that creating new arrows. With the self-centered attitude, we are creating new arrows. Right? We are creating new arrows of poverty, arrows of miseries, arrows of long short life, arrows of sickness, arrows of disharmony and so forth. We are creating new arrows because of such an attitude. So think more about this, we see we start feeling angry towards the self-centered attitude. If you are very ab if you're really able to feel anger towards self-centered attitude, this is the mark of the success of your practice. Whereas if you feel angry towards others or feel angry towards yourself, that is wrong. You are going the the, the wrong track, right? Okay, this is what we should think about the demerit of cherishing oneself and benefit of cherishing others. So we have to split them two, although these two are very similar, but split them to two, you do that in a step. Okay, so tomorrow we will do uh, tomorrow we will do the, the next step. What's the next step? Um, Practicing, practicing, practicing the taking of suffering of others with emphasis on compassion. And the number five is the practice of giving your happiness to others with emphasis on loving kindness. Okay, so I think tomorrow we will finish till we'll finish all the, the remaining steps. Okay, we'll stop here. Three frustrations.